ام اسماعیل بھائی وال جی سورت مبارکت الفاتح اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشكره ونسل ونسلم على حبيب إله العالمين حافظ سره ومبلغ رسالاته الرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم محمد وبآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاسب حقوقهم من الأولين والآخرين من الآن إلى كيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وكلامه الكريم وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يريدون ليطفيا نور الله بأفواههم والله متم نوره ولو كره الكافرون أمنا بالله وصدق الله العلي العظيم صل على محمد وآل محمد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that yuriduna liyutfiya nur Allah bi afwahihim. They want to put out the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yuriduna liyutfiya nur Allah bi afwahihim. They want to put out the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their mouths. Yani the ni'mat or the lamp or the light of Allah is there, metaphorically. But they want to put out, they want to switch it off be afwahihim with their mouths. Yeah, they want to disrespect him. They want, they want to disrespect the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They want to put out, they want to switch it off that lamp with their mouths. Be afwahihim. Then Allah continues, Wallahu mutimmu nuri. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to protect its light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to strengthen that light. Although they want to put out Wallahu mutimmu nuri Walau karihal kafirun Perhaps Maybe Allah says It might be adverse to the kafirun To the disbelievers They won't like it But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect it Now You will find that According to the mufassirin Maybe Here The lamp it could mean many things, like Quran. If you, in the past, people tried to fight with Quran. Quran also had tough time. They wanted that Quran should not remain amongst people. This nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could be many things. It could be Islam itself. It could be Ahlul Bayt, the A'immas themselves. That they, they, they didn't want until now, they don't want that A'imma should remain amongst the society. They don't want even the imam should stay amongst the society. It could be Islam. It, it could be Quran. It could be imam himself. Because each and every imam, they had an individual who targeted that imam. That they, want, they, met, they tried the level best that the imam should not remain alive. Each and every imam faced tough time. It could be a prophet. The way Quran says, وَالشَّمْسِ وَظُهَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا تَهَاهَا وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا كَدْ أَفْلَهَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَكَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا 
kazabat thamudu bitaghwaha idhim ba'atha ashkaha faqala lahum rasulullah naqatullah wa suqiyaha fakadhabuhu fa'akaruha fadamdam alayhim rabbihim bidhambihim fasawaha wala yakhafu uqbaha when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears and takes oath of so many things yani when allah is taking and I, this could be the only surah maybe in quran and majid that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives takes oath so many times several times of so many things and then when he comes to most important thing when he talks about nafs he says that he has created it per in a perfect manner perfectly he has inspired in this nafs perfection and imperfection then allah continues he says that that person is successful who has purified this nafs that person is unsuccessful who has polluted this nafs then he says kazzabat thamud bi taghwaha then he comes to completely another chapter of allah he talks of another chapter he says that the qaum of thamud the tribe of thamud when they called a lie to their prophet kazzamat thamud bi taghwaha idhim ba'ath ashkaha faqala lahum rasulullah naqatullah wa suqiyaha when their prophet told them their messenger told them that this is the naqa this is the she camel of the lord now that was also the sign of allah that was also the lamp of allah metaphorically that this is the sign of allah this is the she camel of allah respect it but what did they do on the contrary they did not respect the sign of allah they slaughtered it they fa'akaruha they slaughtered into pieces so you will find each and every sign of allah when it came from allah it was destroyed that is why it is just to give an example that when uh, a street a lamp a street light is kept by the council leicester city council and then the street boys or the people of that street whenever the leicester city council keeps a lamp for them a light for them that light is beneficial it provide it is for their own advantage it is for their own good that light it shows way it is for their own good but the boys the street boys the street vendors or the people of that street they destroy that light yani the leicester city council the council kept on keeping the light they went on destroying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept on sending the aimas they went on destroy which of our aimas are saved all of our aimas were killed they were martyred all of them then allah says that now i won't send any any guide if i will send he won't he will be allah will never keep this universe without a guide the guide will be there but he will be in occultation because if he will be there you will kill him based on past history whoever came you killed him you never left him safe you killed now no one will be kept in front of you in front of your eyes a, a guide will come but he will be in occultation let alone the guides the aimas why i've i've brought this topic a bit because soon day after tomorrow we shall be commemorating the shahadat of one of the guides one of the imams who is our ninth holy imam who is the youngest imam killed how old was he 25 years of age imam jawad he was the youngest if you see the series of our imams he was the youngest only 25 years of age he was the youngest martyred and assumed the office of imam also very young only at the age of 8 and this was a challenge for the shia society that first time an imam assumes the office of imam at the age of 8 and he was killed at the age of 25 thus the period of imam was long that is 17 years imam jawad alayhi salam he was martyred at the end of mahiz al qada year 220 after hijra now let alone the imams imams who were not saved they were not kept in safe let alone imam even the followers of imam they were they were in danger they were also killed and martyred very brutally i'll i'll give you some examples and then i i come to urdu part take example of rushaid hajari rushaid hajari was very any any person who was known to be very prominent and very close to the imam that one that that companion was also killed Rushaid Hajari was very close to Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam ali He 
he was very close to Amirul Mu'minin to that extent that Amirul Mu'minin had told him that oh Rushaid you will be killed in my love your hands and feet will be chopped off your tongue will be chopped off it will be cut off oh Rushaid e Hajari and what is the question see the state of Iman the way Quran tells us ya yuhalladhina amanu aminu if we claim that we have Iman we need to have that strong Iman and we need to follow the footsteps Le Amirul Mu'minin is something very different and very far we should try to be the followers of Amirul Mu'minin those prominent companions of Amirul Mu'minin like like Rushaid Hajari you know what is the question he is posing to Amirul Mu'minin he says that ya Ali when I will be killed what will be will I what will be my destiny what will be my destiny what will be my akibat will by will my akibat be bakhair will my will my destiny be good what did Amirul Mu'minin reply? Ali says that, Oh, Rushaid Hajari, you are with me in this world and you will be with me in the hereafter. What does it mean? It means that your destiny will be good. And when Amirul Mu'minin showed him that, Oh, Rushaid Hajari, this will be the tree, that under this tree you will be hanged and your tongue will be cut off. History tells us, and Zahabi says, even Sunni narration says, even uh, Allama Majlisi says in Safiratul Bihar, that Rushaid Hajari would go to the tree he would pray underneath that tree and he would also water that tree and when Amirul Mu'minin showed him the tree they sat underneath the tree and it was a dead palm tree they were they ate that deaths from the tree and Rushaid Hajari said that Ya Ali the dates are so delicious if it was us if we would have known that underneath this tree we will be killed or we will be martyred underneath that tree we would be maybe we would not go besides the tree because I know some people when I was staying in Kum and when they would come to visit me those relatives and close friends and they and we would show them the shops in, in front of Haram there were some shops where kafan were being sold and they would say no I'm a kafan with that kafan they were they were scared they see the state of Iman that is why the Arabs of Makkah when the Bani Asad when they went to Rasulullah they said in of Medina sorry they came to Rasulullah and they said that ya Rasulullah we brought Iman waqalatil arabu amanna Allah replied that tell them kul lam tu'min wa wa kul walakin kulu aslamna tell them that they've not brought Iman Iman is something else tell them that they've brought Islam walakin kulu aslamna there are different status states there is a status of Iman which is very high and there is a state of Islam you have not brought Iman yet Iman has not penetrated in your heart then Allah continues in Surah Hujurat he says that do you want to know who are mu'minin innamal mu'minun alladhina amanu billahi wa rasooli thumma lam yartabu wa jahadu bi amwalihim wa anfusihim ulaika humus sadiqoon they are those that they have Iman in Allah and their Prophet then they don't doubt completely and they do they, they strive and struggle with the life and their mal and these are the truthful ones Rushaid Hajari and when Rushaid Hajari he, he was saying to people and he said even to Ziyad and Amirul Mumin told him also that Muawiyah and Ziyad will kill you who is Ziyad? Ziyad is called Ziyad bin Abi in Arabic bin Abihi it means Ziyad the son of his father because his mother Ziyad's mother was free with all with all men she was not a chest lady so nobody knew who is the father of Ziyad Ziyad was called Ziyad bin Abi now who is Ziyad bin Abi the father of Ubaidullah Ibn Ziyad Ibn Ziyad the governor the ruthless governor of Kufa Ubaidullah Ibn Ziyad his father was known as Ziyad bin Abi and it was Muawiyah told him that don't worry I'm giving I, I will share the same name if you are called Ziyad bin Abi will I'll give you my father's name you will be Ziyad bin Abu Sufyan yeah, this was the violation of the tradition of the Prophet what did the Prophet say that the son should be of the marriage bed the son should belong out of the marriage bed Rasulullah said and if the son the child is not out of the marriage bed then the couple should face the stone it means that they should face punishment 
yani this was the tradition of rasulullah this was the islamic law that they should be stoned to death they should face stone they should face punishment but here you will find muawiyah the so called khalifatul muslimin he is violating the islamic law and he is giving him the name he saying that you are then ziyad otherwise do not call yourself ziyad bin abi you are ziyad bin abu sufyan this was ziyad bin abi lanatullah alayhi he killed rushaid hajari initially he said ziyad bin abi said to rushaid hajari that what did your master say he said my master said that you will kill me you will chop off my hands and my feet and you will cut off my tongue he says that i will prove the statement of your master wrong and you get out from my court when he was coming out from the court of uh, he was coming out from the court of ziyad bin abi he he told his soldiers call him again he says that you should not you you don't deserve to be alive because if you stay alive you will spread your evil you should be crucified he was crucified he, his hands and his feet were chopped off and then his still his tongue was still safe when his tongue was still safe he said that one thing i want to speak before you cut my tongue because he was going on eulogizing ali ibn abi talib he was going on praising amirul mu'minin he says before you cut my tongue i just want to say one statement what is the statement he said that i want to prove that the prediction of my master of the commander of the faithful amirul mu'minin has turned into truth see you are killing me what the, the same thing which amirul mu'minin said and now you will chop off my tongue and he commanded that his his tongue should be chopped off as well this was rushaid hajari amr bin hamik there's another companion of amirul mu'minin in the battle of safin several the several people they were uh, they were betrayed and they they became they became against amirul mu'minin and amr bin hamik said that if all kurz amirul mu'minin and all of them call amirul mu'minin kafir i will say that amirul mu'minin is amirul mu'minin ali ibn abi talib why because he is jahan and nafs a payambar he is the soul of rasul he is aqdamul iman he is the first one to he is the first one to embrace islam and to say that he is ba iman he is the husband of zahra he is the father of hasanain in front of muawiya and then muawiya said that amr bin hamik should be called out he should be also imprisoned they looked for amr bin hamik they did not get amr bin hamik meanwhile they imprisoned his wife when his his wife was imprisoned and the uh, uh, amr bin hamik was they were in search of amr bin hamik when amr bin hamik was caught he was beheaded and muawiya said now the head should be sent to his wife when the head of amr bin hamik was sent to the wife the wife started weeping and see the state of iman of the wife of amr bin hamik you know what did she say she said that i'm not crying because you are beheaded i'm thinking i was i thought that they might not catch you they might not behead you they might not slaughter you they will kill me i would get shahada but on the contrary you are killed you got shahada i wish if i was martyred this is the state of iman of the wife of amr bin hamik you will find that our imams came on this earth on the face of the earth but they killed all our imams they tried to snatch everything from them they took the throne they took the imamat un logo ne sab kuch chheen liya lekin kuch aisi cheeze hai dushmanan e ahle bayt ne bahut chaaha ke hamare aimma se ye cheeze wo log chheen le lekin na chheen paaye wo kya hai ilm aur akhlaq iman ye cheeze wo na chheen paaye bahut chahte the ke hamare aimma ke akhlaq ko bhi chheene hamare aimma ke ilm ko bhi chheene lekin jisko khuda rakhe usko kaun chakhe khuda ne chaaha ke inko ilm e ghaib de और ये वारिस इल्म गैब थे इसलिए अमर बिन फरज कहते हैं कि एक मर्तबा मैं इमाम जवाद के साथ दजला के नदी के पास हम सैर करते थे गुजरते थे और मैंने इमाम जवाद से सवाल किया कि आपके मानने वाले दावा करते हैं कि आपके पास सब चीज का इल्म है 
یہ دجلا کے نہر کا بھی علم رکھتے ہیں اس کا وزن بھی کتنا ہے آپ علم رکھتے ہیں تو امام جواد نے فرمایا ہاں سچ بات ہے خدا نے ہمیں علم غیب سے نوازا ہے تو پھر امر بن فرج کہتے ہیں یہ خود روایت نقل کرتے ہیں کہ امام جواد نے مجھ سے کہا کہ آیا تم انکار کرتے ہو میں تمہیں بتاؤں پھر امام جواد فرماتے ہیں آیا تم یقین رکھتے ہو آیا تم ایمان رکھتے ہو کہ اگر خدا چاہے تو ایک مکھی کے مکھی کے اندر بھی وہ اس علم کو انسپائر کر سکتا ہے علم انسپائر کر سکتا ہے یہ پورا نہر نہر دجلا دجلا عراق میں ایک نہر ہے دجلا کا علم یعنی اس پانی کا وزن ایک مکھی کے اندر خدا انسپائر کر سکتا ہے تو اس نے کہا اگر خدا چاہے تو یہ علم مکھی کو بھی دے سکتا ہے تو اس وقت امام جواد نے فرمایا کہ انا اکرم اللہ من بعوضتن تو ہم اللہ کے نظر میں زیادہ عزت رکھتے ہیں اس مکھی کے نسبت میں خدا, خدا نے چاہا کہ ہمیں وہ علم دے حتیٰ تاریخ کہتی ہے کہ ابو ہاشی میں جعفری امام کے وکیل تھے اور ہر جگہ جاتے تھے اور کچھ تین لوگ ابو ہاشی میں جعفری کو ان لوگوں نے امام کے لیے نامہ دیا لیٹرز دیا اور ابو ہاشی میں جعفری بھول گئے کہ یہ نامہ کس کے طرف سے ہے اور جب امام جواد کے پاس پہنچتے ہیں یہ نامہ تو دیتے ہیں لیکن وہ کہتے نہیں ہیں کہ میں بھول گیا کہ یہ نامہ کس کے طرف سے ہے ابھی ابو ہاشی میں جعفری نے نہیں بتایا امام جواد نے فرمایا کہ یہ نامہ ریان بن شبیب سے ہے یہ لیٹر محمد بن حمزہ سے ہے یہ لیٹر فلاں بن فلاں سے ہے اور ابو ہاشی میں جعفری کو تعجب ہوا فکر دیکھنے لگے ابو ہاشی میں جعفری خود روایت نقل کرتے ہیں کہ جب میں نے دیکھا امام کو تو امام نے وہ فتح بس سما علیہ امام مسکرانے لگے اور امام نے کہا تمہیں تعجب ہوتا ہے یعنی امام کے پاس وہ علم غیب تھا اور اسی علم کی وجہ سے امام کو زہر دیا گیا ماہ ذلقاد کی آخری ایام تھے انتیسویں ماہ ذلقاد کا دن تھا کہ امام کو زہر دیا گیا کیوں امام کو زہر دیا گیا کیونکہ یاہیہ بن اقسم وہ بہت ضعیفی کے عالم میں بڑھاپا کے عالم میں ان کو بھی پوچھا گیا ان سے بھی پوچھا گیا ایک حکم اور امام جواد اور سب سنی علماء کو پوچھا گیا اور امام جواد سے بھی پوچھا گیا معتصم ملعون جو حاکی میں وقت تھا اور خلیفہ تھا انہوں نے امام جواد کا اپنین کو اپنایا امام جواد کی رائے لی اس نے کہا کہ یہ بہترین رائے ہے یہ بہترین اپنین ہے کیوں معتصم ملعون نے امام جواد کی رائے کو اپنا لی یاہیا بن اقسم کو پسند نہیں آیا یاہیا بن اقسم نے معتصم کے کان کو بھرا کہ تم شیعہ علماء کو تو لفٹ کرتے ہو اور ان کو بہت اونچا چڑھاتے ہو یہ رافضی ہے یہ شیعہ ہے بس اس کی وجہ سے امام جواد کو زہر دیا گیا ہاں امام جواد کو جب زہر دیا گیا تاریخ کہتی ہے کہ ماہ ذلقاد کے آواخر ایام تھے ماہ ذلقاد کے انتیسویں دن تھا کہ امام اس دنیا سے شہید ہو گئے امام اس دنیا سے فارق ہو گئے رحلت کر گئے ازادارو ہاں امام کو کہاں پہ سپرد خاک کیا گیا کازمین میں ان کے جد کے پاس ان کے دادا کے پاس میں کہوں گا کہ جنازہ بہت شان و شوکت سے اٹھا اور آپ کے جد کے پاس آپ کو سپرد خاک کیا گیا آپ کتنے خوش نصیب تھے جب ہم تاریخ میں پڑھتے ہیں کہ امام جواد کو امام کاظم اپنے دادا کے سڑھانے سپرد خاک کیا گیا امام جواد کتنے خوش نصیب تھے ایک نواسا یاد آ رہا ہے ان کے دل میں بھی ایک تمنا تھی کہ مجھے میرے نانا کے پاس سپرد خاک کیا جائے لیکن نانا کے سڑھانے نصیب نہیں ہوا بلکہ جب جنازہ اٹھا جب جنت البقی کے پاس جنازہ پہنچتا ہے تو تیروں کی بارش ہوئی آپ نے کبھی دیکھا ہے کہ جنازہ جب گھر سے نکلتا ہے تو آیا وہی جنازہ دوبارہ گھر پہ آتا ہے لیکن ہائے حسن المجتبہ کتنے مظلوم تھے اتنے آج بھی حسن مجتبہ مظلوم ہے آج جب زائر جاتا ہے شیان علی جب زوار زیارت کے لیے امام حسن کی زیارت جاتے ہیں تو جنت البقی کے باہر ہی زیارت پڑھتے ہیں اگر اندر جانا چاہتے ہیں تو بدعت کے تانے ملتے ہیں 
ألا لعنة الله للقوم الظالمين وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منكلب ينكلبون إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون رغم بكذائه وتسليما لأمره جن مرهمين كليه یہ مجلس منعقد کی گئی ہے ان مرحومین کے لیے ایک سورہ فاتحہ پڑھنے کی گزارش ہے الفاتحہ <تصفيق> 